Thanks for joining us and welcome to this fruition webinar um, on our CIA Survey Report 2016, How CIAs Can Bring Cloud Under Control. Thanks everyone for your time and joining us today. Uh, in this 30 minutes, we'll aim to discuss some of the key issues around shadow IT and cloud security risks from the findings of the survey we did with 400 CIOs. Introducing myself, I'm Tina, the Marketing Exec here at Fruition Partners. I'll introduce us and how we work with ServiceNow and we'll share any questions at the end. Please feel free to submit any questions that you do have um, in the tab and we'll get back to them at the end. Our main presenter today is John Peck. He's our principal consultant who has a remarkable 15 years of experience in the industry, having worked with well-known clients like NHS, Blood and Transplant. Uh, just to let you guys know as well that the webinar will be recorded. So who are Fruition Partners? Well, in short, Fruition Partners is a one-stop shop for cloud service management. We started 18 years ago as an advisory company that consulted leaders on how to best approach service management, IT asset management and governance from a practical process design perspective. We still do the same today, uh, but we've expanded our solution offerings globally, including the EU and US, to include an equally shared focus on tool implementation and configuration, application development and ongoing managed services. Our evolution from process focus to everything service managed focus began six years ago after we did our first ServiceNow implementation. It was at this moment we realized that ServiceNow was in fact the best platform for accelerating business processes. And so we were early to jump on the party and um, develop an end-to-end -end solution set to best serve the growing ServiceNow customer base, becoming one of the few gold service partners for ServiceNow of which the rewards can be seen in some of the following stats. We've continued to scale to provide ServiceNow customers with process guidance and innovative solutions to maximize their platform investment, not only in IT, um, but also other disciplines like HR and facilities. In 2014, our success led to an acquisition by CSC uh, to become ServiceNow practice within their business. This is based upon our experience in the market and understanding of the true business objectives which sit behind ServiceNow programs. As you can see from the map, uh, Fruition has a mark across the whole world, but CSE also have their own ServiceNow resources filling in the gaps for businesses across the globe. John actually recently traveled to Vietnam for a week to train CSE staff there, sharing knowledge and experience. His ex expertise in the industry is obviously highly valued and, and he was able to bring others um, up to the speed with the knowledge and service management to high standards. Since being acquired by CSE, we have made several acquisitions uh, throughout Europe and Asia Pacific to increase our co coverage and experience within the market with companies like Estedians in Europe and UXC Keystone in Australia. As a result, we have over 1,000 customers. We've completed over 2,500 ServiceNow projects. Our team's trained and we can happily boast about our 400 plus ServiceNow dedicated certified consultants that make sure customers are getting the best out of their ServiceNow. With nine years experience working with ServiceNow, even with a recent expansion um, and increase in customer projects, we've been able to maintain the highest customer satisfaction score amongst all ServiceNow partners at 8.9, um, you know, which we believe reflects in our all-in commitment to not only ServiceNow, but more importantly, you, um, our customer. So the journey we've been on has recently been, been also acknowledged by industry experts from HSS who acknowledged CSC fruition as the biggest capability within the market. This is based on existing marketing capabilities uh, where ServiceNow is heading and focusing on future outside of just IT, customer satisfaction of all the providers. So as you can see, Expedians also sits in the middle of this graphic um, as this was produced ahead of our acquisition, showing that our, our capability has now increased even further within the market. We use these capabilities to bring service managed to not only CSC customers, to, but to CSC themselves. They, see service, they saw ServiceNow as a strategic platform and us as that leader in the space. 
So what exactly is the CIO survey? Well, in 2015, we identified that CIOs had a range of serious concerns over control of cloud services. This year, Fruition Partners repeated and extended last year's uh, research into CIO's use of cloud computing in an effort to understand the progress being made and processes being followed. The research was undertaken by independent market researchers, uh, Bantam Bourne, with a total sample of 400 UK and USA CIOs from large enterprises with over 1,000 employees across a wider range of industry sectors. This says part two. Um, we will go into more detail about, two, about part two later in the presentation. Um, this one looks at how the companies manage cloud school, uh, whereas the second part will look at how has service management spread throughout the business. Now, before I do pass the power on to John, um, I just wanted to highlight the importance of exactly why we've done this service, survey. Sorry. Um, so it's about us, so we want to know um, about the industry pain points and how we can get better at understanding the issues and what to address. More importantly, it's also for you guys, for the customers, to, to know and benchmark where you're positioned in the industry. Hello there. So one of the things we do is we keep a close eye on the ministry, and that's because it's our livelihood. We need to know what's going on. And one of the other indicators we review is the International Data Corporation, um, which is an American market research company uh, and analysis and advisory firm. They have a cloud infrastructure tracker, which looks at cloud service use and has been doing since 2014. And in 2014, it was just over 20% of cloud services in IT, both public and private, so internal clouds uh, within companies as well. By 2016, that's grown to 40%. It's doubled in size in the last couple of years, and they're predicting that it will be just under 50% by 2019. And personally, I think this is a bit conservative. I reckon that we'll be at least, if not well over the 50%, half of our IT provision to our business users will be in the cloud. So what did we uncover on our survey? Well, the first thing we found out is we're not using what we've already learned the hard way. We still do the basic six idle processes, incident, problem, change, request, config, and asset management, and we do some event management around our operations management piece. We've taken little benefit from the ITIL 3.5 life cycles, um, where there are 26 to 32 processes. Four out of five of our CIOs identified that they're not using the basic six service management processes to manage their cloud services. So the majority of them identified that we're using them in our internal space, but not in our, um, in our cloud service provision. More worryingly, over half of the business users, all of those non-IT people out there who we support, are dealing direct with the vendors. They're purchasing from the vendors and they're logging their issues with the vendors. Um, and of course, they don't always know the right questions. They don't always know what's a good deal. Will it work? And most importantly, is it safe? And of course, we know what happens when it breaks. The first port of call is their internal IT. They come straight to us and they tell us about all their woes and difficulties with this solution that we had no support in them buying in the first place. Next, we identified that we're actually losing control of our business's IT. We're still the go-to guy when it goes wrong. We spent all that effort in developing our IT processes, our IT service management processes to support our internal IT. Um, and getting our own houses in order, but our business users aren't benefiting from that at all, and it's a bit like having toddlers. Just when you thought you knew what they were doing, they go off and they buy something else, and then we find that HR's bought a different product and facilities have bought a different product, and we don't have any say in what they're buying. We don't have any support for them in buying it, but we're expected to look after it. Because two-thirds of our colleagues, over two-thirds, don't feel that they need us to buy IT services. They're quite happy that it's very easy to buy IT. How hard can it be? And they go out and they talk to some random salesperson and they buy some random piece of IT. 
And four out of five of our CIOs are finding that, uh, feeling that loss of control of the estate. Um, they're expected to take responsibility, um, but they are not able to have a say in what's going on. And of course, they are considered accountable when things go wrong with any IT whatsoever. We identified that the management of shadow IT has got worse. When we can see it, we still don't manage it the way we manage our own estate. In fact, between our two surveys, this perceptibly got worse by 12%. And we're not entirely sure whether this was because uh, there are more cloud services and we have less control, or we had a, a wider sample size but it's clear the situation was worse than from our last survey. Um, over half of, or half of our CIOs have greatly or completely reduced control over their cloud services and are feeling that. Nearly two thirds of our CIOs are guessing that there are cloud applications being used out in the business that they don't know about. Of course, they don't know about it, so they can't tell us how many there are they know there's an issue they know people are using it that they have no visibility of whatsoever and 380 of our 400 cios felt that easy access to it services is removing their control of the it services the scariest part for me are the risks that are emerging and in fact, our CIOs are equally concerned by all of this. Nearly three quarters identified that this unsanctioned, ungoverned IT is introducing long-term business risks. You don't know about it. You haven't checked it out. For example, the recent um, a simple search of the web reveals some figures. Uh, recent, the Rio 2016 Olympics public website suffered a significant and sustained denial of service attack. And it was only because they'd had a really good build of their website that they resisted it and were able to keep the web services running. So the public facing Rio Olympics website, um, somebody attempted to take it down. And it was only because it was a well-built website that it survived. And Four-fifths identified that this unsanctioned, ungoverned IT is introducing long-term security risks. Again, they don't know about it, hasn't been checked out, but the security is even more worrying. Um, Sage, the well-known accounting firm, have recently um, publicly admitted that there's been a client data breach of employee account, bank account details and salary information, and they told the police that these details may have been accessed this actually caused their shares to drop as much as 3.9% in the first hour. So these are real business risks that we're identifying. And if we don't support our business and help them um, buy the right cloud services, buy the right services, then we're putting our whole livelihood at risk. In our own experience, um, for a little while ago, we were speaking to a global company, a huge company we know. We're not going to tell you who they are. They decided it was time for them to look at their own cloud storage. And of course, there's lots of excellent cloud storage solutions out there. Just a few well-known examples on the screen, and I'm sure you could name a few more. Our friends have actually got one single sanctioned solution. They had clearly told their business that there was only one cloud storage that they supported. So when they did the survey, they expected to find two or three others that were being used, but nothing serious. They surveyed the business and they discovered 66 cloud storage solutions in use. Can anybody name 66 secure known cloud storage solutions? In fact, can you even name six known secure cloud storage solutions? And of course, although this is now slipping into history, you may remember a site called LimeWire. Uh, it was a cloud storage file sharing solution. Um, it was actually became known for unlicensed music, movies, and software and eventually was much better known for its virus-infected files and was one of the highest um, causes of virus infections across the world. So what are we aiming for? <coughs> well, first of all, for our business users, they expect what they get at home. 
they have Amazon, Facebook, eBay, Uber, they sign in, they gain an account, they get access to these things very quickly. They can go onto Amazon, they can buy stuff online through nice interfaces, sometimes with one click, very easy to do. Our business departments, they expect immediate access to their new IT, um, IT capabilities with low effort. Um, as soon as they identify the requirements, they expect to be able to just go out and find this IT solution. They don't want to pay extra just because we've said that it's the right solution for them and we've added our premiums on top of it. And of course for our company, they want us to provide cheaper IT for everybody. Every year they want us to have a 10% reduction in our IT spend. Um, they want common authoritative data, users, organizations, locations, PO numbers, all to come from a standard single source. They want this to be rapidly and efficiently delivered with no excuses about timescales, and they expect it to be high quality, secure, managed, governed, a well-organized, well-maintained service, and of course they always expect it to be cheap. So there's lots of information there about what we're seeing, and if you pick up our survey results, there's even more information in there. Um, where do we start? What on earth can we do about it? Well, we've identified three places that we can focus here, um, and there are the three we've just listed. First of all, we're going to focus on the users. We can improve our IT services that we're already providing and make sure that they're the best they can be. Are they easy to access? Are they easy to provision? Is it easy to understand what's going on? Do we have them well managed? Do we have good information about how they're running? We can optimize the provisioning of these, and it doesn't matter if it's a laptop, a new account, a new application, something brand new to the business. We can make sure that it's as easy as possible for the users to request and gain access to that. Although it's difficult to um, encompass, we need to offer the latest fashionable IT services. We need to offer the things that users are seeing available to other people today not some of the old clunky IT services that have served us so well over the years. And in fact, we need to go out and ask our business users what they want. We can um, find what services they're currently using, if they're shadow IT unauthorized, and we can also ask them what their expectations are of IT. And the biggest benefit to us from understanding this is we want to retain control of our IT estate. For our business, we need to look at the whole business and find single solutions for all departments. There's plenty of products out there. Um, I know we're a service now vendor and obviously we strongly support that, but there are plenty of other products that we would see as a common solution. And we were talking about cloud storage earlier. Select one single cloud storage solution, make sure it's very easy for your users to access, and um, make sure that everybody sticks to that. So if we deploy common platforms and common processes across those functions, let's encompass those in the processes that we've already got for incident management, change management, problem management. And in fact, offer our business colleagues our IT experience. We've got some hard won experience in service management. We need to offer that out to our other business departments and make sure that they can gain all of the benefit from that. Then we need to manage it better. We need to make sure that we're doing the best we can at managing our IT services and understanding how well it's delivered and show our colleagues how to do the same and get them to get the benefit from it. Finally, we need to engage procurement and finance. It's really important that they both understand our IT strategy. Um, first of all, procurement. Obviously, they can stop spend on other IT, on shadow IT, and finance equally can decline to approve this, this spend on shadow IT and suggest to the users that they look for our common solutions. And at the highest level, how do we support our business strategy? Well, there's lots of words, optimize, shift left, user enablement, whichever term you like, and I'm not a big fan of any of those, um, but what we're aiming to do is just make it a lot easier for our users to gain our services and also to remove the effort involved by us on deploying these services for the users. Um, wherever we don't need to be doing something, then we need to take our hands off the tasks and let the systems do them for us. 
Um, one example I use is if you restaurant touched your dinner as often as we mess around with IT when we're delivering it, then you really wouldn't want to eat it because it would suggest that everybody in the restaurant between the kitchen and your table had moved your carrots around your plate. We need to just let our systems and our processes deliver IT in the same consistent way all of the time and we can get on with managing that delivery. And if we manage it all the same way, if it works already, it can work equally well in the cloud. So our service management processes, once they're in good condition, will be equally appropriate for cloud services as they are for our internal services. And if we start to improve the way we manage, manage our service providers and our supply chain management, then we're starting on the road to service integration and management, SIAM, one of the uh, newer consultant buzzwords I know, but it's also a very uh, useful discipline that has some good things to say about our general environment um, and managing this cloud service provision and managing out our services like that. And of course we at Fruition want to help with this because that's what we do for a living. First of all, we can advise you both on your strategy all the way at the top, which ITIL processes do I deploy next? How do I consolidate my ITIL processes? Right the way down to your implementation, what should my incident management process look like? Is this a good idea? How do I make major incident work more efficiently? And on through change management and all the other ITIL processes. Well, they're processes identified in ITIL, the important service management ones. And also, we want to help bring the rest of your organization along on the journey. Um, be it consolidating for a single service desk, looking at round the world support, uh, round the clock support, or just ensuring that everybody understands the way we're changing IT and how we're taking much more control of the whole IT picture. Uh, we've got skills in organizational change. Clearly, as Tina mentioned at the beginning, we have significant experience in implementing service management way before the days of service now. Um, and this gives us a long history of service management projects. Um, we've done it a lot of times. We've made the odd mistake when we were younger. We learned how to get past our mistakes, and you should use our hard-won experience. We do this every day, so we can help you do it for you. We can help you educate, both in service management and in ServiceNow directly. We can help teach your guys how to um, in, engage with this environment, um, both how to improve their processes and make you somewhat self-sufficient for that, and also just how to maintain your ServiceNow platform and make you self-sufficient in that as well. Or if you want, we can actually run your ServiceNow for you, either with you or you can give us the keys to ServiceNow. Finally, we have a track record of innovation when it's appropriate, both for mainstream IT processes, for other business processes such as HR and facilities, and for new opportunities. We're looking for the other bits of the business that we can improve, and this doesn't have to be the big things. If we're looking at a common platform, we can start to look at improving some of the smaller processes that are niggling and take just too much time. And again, as Tina pointed out at the beginning, ServiceNow acknowledges that we're pretty good at this stuff. Tina. Great, thanks John. Um, guys, so I will send you guys the CIO survey part one um, if you're interested to know a bit more about exactly what was inside that um, in the next few days. Uh, we do also have part two, which is about delivering the service revolution um, and what CIOs need to do to meet the challenge of um, everything as a service. So there's a link to there if you want to make note of it. Um, you can find out more about that um, and register yourself. We are open for questions, so I'll give you guys a few minutes. Um, we've got a few as well anyway. Um, I'll give you a few minutes, and then we can get those answered. Um, okay, so John, Steve says, how do I stop them um, from buying other applications? Yeah, it sounds very easy, and I can say it very glibly. Um, when somebody in, in uh, marketing wants to buy themselves a simple little graphic program, and we've got lots of good things going on in our environment, how do we prevent them? Well, this is where I said we need to engage procurement finance first. 
because they're the guys that will also help us identify when there's a, an RFP or something else going out for these things to be bought. Um, we need to be friendly, we need to go along to marketing in this case, and we need to talk to them about what they need to do, what they want to buy, why they didn't come to us in the first place, just for our information, but in the friendliest way, say, look, we can help you with this, we need to make sure this is something that's robust and well supported and good for you, not just a quick fix that actually may disappoint you in the long term. So. How do we stop them? Well, by making friends with both them and the people who might help them buy and pay for these things and ensure that we're engaged in a very positive way, not just that you can't do that, but in a practical, look, we can help you with this. Okay, um, Wendy's asked some, you know, something that follows on from that. So why do we need to stay in control of other department applications? Um, we don't need to. We could give up IT to everybody else and we could just disappear into the woodwork and we'd go back 30 years to when businesses didn't have IT and they hired young lads to start setting up networks and look after their PCs. But we all pay our mortgages based on being the IT function. Um, we can't get away any longer with being the function that says no. What we need to be is the function that makes the business better, that makes people really happy. And we can see this with public sites like Facebook where people want to be part of it. Well, we need to do this so that we ensure our survival and then retain our credibility in the business. And the more we get known for the go-to guy who actually fixes stuff instead of the go-to guy who's always left some stuff broken, um, the better our survival in the business. And there's a subtlety as well. You don't always know who's got the ear of the senior exec, and our budget depends on their perception of us. Well, if they perceive that we're adding real value, we'll find it much easier to ensure we don't get the huge budget cuts that we've seen in recent years. Okay, perfect. Um, I'll put out one more question and finish off. Um, how, Paul's asking, how do I get Siam? Ah, so I've had people say, right, I want to buy Siam. We can't buy it. We have to get good at all of the other things, and it's one of those end games. It's like becoming best practice or world class. As we get good at our basic ITIL processes or our service management processes, as we get good at supply chain management, vendor management, customer management, all of these things, we get closer and closer until one day we get into work and we realize that we're doing SIAM and we're an example that we can hold up to the rest of the world. It will take us two to three years to get that good but what we do is we concentrate on the bit. So how do I get Sam the same way we eat an elephant? One bite at a time. <laughs> okay, thanks, John. Um, guys, thanks for your time today. Just to let you know uh, before we do end the webinar that we'll be at Now Forum uh, on the 27th of October. So please do come and see us. Um, so if you have any questions, you can ask one of our through experts um, and we will have some um, prizes to give away through our draw. Thanks again to everyone attending and thanks John for presenting.